Excellent. Look at this new SSD from Intel. It's called the SSD DCP4800X. It has a whopping 375 gigabyte capacity and it only costs 1,520 US dollars MSRP. This is an enterprise device made for data centers and server arrays if the catchy name and crazy high price didn't tip you off, but it's also the first commercially available product to release featuring Intel's 3D crosspoint technology, a new method of storing and recalling bits of data in a solid state drive. Intel products with 3D Crosspoint, as well as Intel controllers and software, will be part of a family of products called Optane. So for those of you who don't get really excited about new SSD technology, here's what I'm going to do. Start off with some details on the underlying technology, 3D Crosspoint, then some specifics about the DCP4800X that's releasing today with wide availability in the second half of 2017, and then I'll close with some discussion about future possibilities for Optane products, especially if you're wondering how this might affect you if you're a home builder of desktop PCs for gaming and other stuff that doesn't involve a data center. So 3D Crosspoint has been in the works for a long time, eight plus years, because storage is slow. Even with SSDs that are much, much faster than mechanical hard drives, your permanent non-volatile storage is still the slowest part of your computer. If you consider a NAND package, for example, the little rectangles on your SSD's PCB that actually store the data, a 3D Crosspoint package would look roughly the same and perform the same basic function of remembering the ones and zeros that make up your operating system files or your MP3 collection. 3D Crosspoint uses completely different technology than NAND internally though, and although Intel won't tell us the trade secrets like what metals they're using and why they went with a Green Bay Packers color scheme, you can get the general idea that 3D means it's 3D stackable, and Crosspoint means the intersecting traces that you can see here in gray can access the data cells that are shown in yellow and green to either store a bit or read a bit of data from each cell. This means that the data stored with 3D Crosspoint is accessible at a granular level. You can access or store data down to the word or bit line, as opposed to accessing a byte at a time like RAM does, or typically four kilobyte pages like NAND Flash does. The upshot is that at the 3D Crosspoint chip level, performance versus NAND is a thousand times faster with a thousand times the endurance, and it's also about 10 times denser than DRAM. Unfortunately, this raw performance is somewhat hamstrung because these 3D Crosspoint chips still must integrate seamlessly with existing computer technology. So we're limited by existing standards, bus speeds, and the expectation that the operating systems have when it comes to how data storage will work. So for now, Optane devices with 3D Crosspoint will still use byte level access methods like RAM does. This level of granularity does mean that Optane drives can do away with the program erase cycles that NAND-based SSDs rely on because NAND-based SSDs must rewrite a block at a time. Also, that means no need for trim or defragmenting with 3D Crosspoint as the data can be written in place, just update a cell's state rather than deleting it and rewriting it. Also, if you're wondering, the 3D Crosspoint chips they're currently producing pack 128 gigabits of storage per die and are manufactured on 20 nanometer lithography. The SSD DCP4800X will debut as a 375 gigabyte SSD with a PCI Express Gen 3x4 interface and will still use the NVMe interface specification so it can drop into any system that supports those specs. Yes, even an AMD system, although Intel understandably won't be validating Ryzen compatibility. The 375 gig add-in card version shown here is available in limited quantities as of today, March 19th, with broad availability in the second half of this year at $1,500. A 750 gig version is also coming in Q2, and a 1.5 terabyte version launches in the second half. No word on pricing for those yet. Intel is also prepping a 2.5 inch U.2 drive. The 375 gig version of that one arrives in Q2. 750 gig and 1.5 terabyte versions are expected again in the second half. If you're using a Xeon platform, for $1,951, you can get a software and hardware bundle, the P4800X with Intel memory drive technology. And this is an example of a different implementation of an Optane drive, aside from just using it as raw storage. Memory drive technology is software that will function as a middleware layer between the drive and your operating system, booting prior to the OS and integrating the P4800X transparently with system memory. Intel says up to eight times the amount of system memory can be allocated via Optane drives. So in theory, you could go from like 128 gigs of system RAM on a server up to like a terabyte by pairing that with Optane, which would be huge for handling large data sets required by certain applications such as transaction processing, simulations, AI, and even in certain situations, gaming. 
Early P4800X units from Intel's early development program will have a three-year warranty and wide launch products will have a five-year warranty. So what does all this actually mean to you? It doesn't mean you should run out and grab a P4800X for your gaming rig. Uh, hopefully that is clear given the price and how many times I've said data center and the fact that DC in the name stands for data center. But this technology will be coming to client devices, that's you know standard at home users like you and me, in the future, and hopefully they will also be more affordable. As a standalone drive, the P4800X excels in responsiveness and IOPS performance, uh, input output operations per second, handling huge amounts of requests for small chunks of data, at least according to Intel's benchmarks, which show that even when pounding the drive with between 100 and 750 megabytes per second of random writes, the latency still hovers around zero. Uh, the P4800X in this chart is that orange line down at the bottom, right by zero, by the way. Low Q depth performance is also vastly improved. Most SSD synthetic tests, like I've run these myself, artificially load up the SSD to a Q depth of 32 or beyond, which is a great way to show what a drive can do, but it's impractical considering that most use case scenarios will never go beyond a Q depth of maybe four or five. The P4800X can hit 100,000 IOPS at Q depth one and 300K at Q depth five. Intel was also using mixed tests with 70% reads and 30% writes with minimal latency reduction and crazy good quality of service, meaning that even the slowest latencies recorded for each transaction that the drive is performing are still very fast, which is sure to catch the eye of the IT crowd out there. Oh, and also listed endurance is 30 drive writes per day over the entire capacity of the SSD within its warranty, which for an SSD is absolutely insane. And Intel is usually pretty conservative with like endurance numbers. So that's impressive too. All things considered, the P4800X seems poised to revolutionize data center storage. Whether you need all those IOPS, best in class quality of service, or your websites load faster, or crazy good endurance. But these use cases, again, aren't of much use to most of you who watch my channel. Also bear in mind that the sequential reads and writes that your standard NAND based SSDs like to tout, like 500 megabytes per second or whatnot, are not Optane's forte, or at least we assume that because Intel didn't show sequential read and write performance at all. I look forward to the consumer versions of these drives though, and I hope we'll have access to some variant of the Intel memory drive technology so we can trick our system into thinking that the Optane drive is system memory. For video editing, I could imagine all my 4K footage sitting in system memory for stutter-free timeline scrubbing. Uh, for gaming, I could imagine massive open world simulations with really high resolution textures and pretty much zero draw distance limitations. Remember, most developers design games to work across a variety of PC configurations, often assuming that there's only gonna be four or eight gigs of system memory to work with and even less VRAM. I might also imagine Intel partnering with a well-known game studio to leverage Optane technology in a highly anticipated upcoming title, but sometimes my imagination gets the better of me. That would be a pretty cool way to show it off though. Anyway, let me know what you guys can come up with as far as more ideas for how faster storage with minimal latency could help out on the desktop side of the PC space. Uh, make sure to hit that like button on your way out. Links to some stuff is down in the description. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.